This is Lullaby by Leila Salamani. When Mila is at school, Louise attaches Adam to her in a large wrap. She likes to feel the child's chubby thighs against her belly, his saliva that runs down her neck when he falls asleep. She sings all day for this baby, praising him for his laziness. She messages him, taking pride in his folds of flesh, his round pink cheeks. In the mornings, the child welcomes her with gargles, his plump arms reaching out for her. In the weeks that follow Louise's arrival, Adam learns to walk. And this boy, who used to cry every night, sleeps peacefully until morning. Mila is wilder. She's a small, fragile girl with the posture of a ballerina. Louise ties her hair in bands so tight that girl's eyes look slanted, pulled towards her temples, like that she resembles one of those medieval heroines with a broad forehead, a cold and noble expression. Mila is a difficult, exhausting child. Anytime she becomes irritated, she screams. She throws herself to the ground in the middle of the street, stamps her feet, lets herself be dragged along to humiliate Louise. When the nanny crouches down and tries to speak to her, Mila turns away. She counts out loud the butterflies on the wallpaper. She watches herself in the mirror when she cries. The child is obsessed by her own reflection. In the street, her eyes are revetted to shop windows. On several occasions, she has bumped into lampposts or tripped over small obstacles on the pavement. Distracted by the contemplation of her own image, Mila is cunning. She knows that the crowd stare and that Louise feels ashamed in the street. The nanny gives in more quickly when there in public. Louise has to take the tours to avoid the toy shop on the avenue, where the little girl stands in front of the window and screams. On the way to school, Mila drags her feet. She steals a raspberry from a green grocer stall. She climbs onto the window sills, hides in porches and runs away as fast as her legs will carry her. Louise tries to go after her while pushing the pram, yelling the girl's name, but Mila doesn't stop until she comes to the very end of the pavement. Sometimes Mila regrets her bad behavior. She worries about Louise's paleness and the fright she gives her. She becomes loving again, cuddly. She makes it up to the nanny, clinging to her legs. She cries and wants to be mothered. Slowly, Louise tames the child. Day after day, she tells her stories, where the same characters always wreck you. Orphans lost little girls, princesses kept as prisoners, and castles abandoned by terrible ogres. Strange beasts, birds with twisted beaks, one-legged bears and melancholic unicorns populate Lucy's landscapes. The little girl falls silent. She stays close to the nanny, attentive, impatient. She asks for certain characters to come back. Where do these stories come from? They emanate from Louis in a continual flood without her even thinking about it. Without her making the slightest effort of memory or imagination. But in what black lake, in what deep forest has she found these cruel tales where the heroes die at the end after first saving the world?